Well, my name is Stephen Budney, Stephen P. Budney, if you will, a Paul, uh, named for my grandfather. And uh, I'm professor of history at University of Pikeville. And how long have you been doing that? I've been here 19 years. Wow. And overall in higher ed, how many years? Uh, 35, uh, 19, I'd say 35. Wow. So as a kid, did you see yourself as a professor in higher ed, or as a kid, what did you want to do? Does any kid see themselves as a professor? I mean, really, <laughs> we all want to be cowboys, or I don't know what people want to be these days, to be honest. Uh, they, everyone wants to be famous, I know that. <laughs> So you can get on Instagram and get 15 minutes of fame. <laughs> but truthfully, I always wanted to be a race car driver. And it's something that I was actually able to fulfill later in life. I did do some racing before I went back into academics. Cool. So that then begs the question about a dream job. What would be a dream job for you? I'm doing it. Uh, right now I'm doing it. I've done a lot of different things over the years. Um, I did do racing, as I said, which made me a, a mechanic for a number of years. I had originally started out going to college and dropped out to pursue my dream of racing. And then gradually that led me into being a mechanic and I ended up working at Pratt Whitney Aircraft for five years. And uh, eventually went back to school uh, for the very simple reason that there I was living in Maine and there was nothing to do in Maine during the winter. So I went back to school and caught the enthusiasm and I just decided to stay in and stay with it and that led me to this. So I mean obviously you just talked about some, you know having winters in Maine as, as spurring you on. Was there anything else in life that spurred you on towards the path that you're currently on? Well, I always had a love of history. Ever since I was very young, I was always interested in history. Uh, I read constantly, and most of the time I was reading about history, so that really was... But that was always a hobby. That was always something that was on the side that I did, even while I was doing other things. And then I realized, when I first went back to college, of course, like any undergraduate, there were a number of options. Uh, I looked at being an English major, I looked at philosophy, but then I decided I didn't want to manage a Barnes and Noble when I got my degree. And, uh, and history just seemed like the most practical course because I, I could not only study history and read about history, but I could write about it. And, you know, for so many people who have a passion or an interest, they, they might do their undergrad degree, and then maybe they might dabble and get their master's. But here you went all the way through to complete to the Ph.D. What, what motivated you to finish that Ph.D.? I simply wasn't going to be a number. There's a lot of attrition in graduate school, and if you want to be perfectly honest, um, I'll be honest. I'm kind of a trophy collector throughout my life if I set goals I achieve them and so once I went on the path there was really no turning back it's just like writing a book I wrote a book and so consequently about William J the abolitionist which came out of my graduate studies but again that was something that I wanted to accomplish in life once I set my sights on getting a PhD, that was something that I wanted to accomplish, and so I wasn't going to let anything deter me. Mm. And that's a huge trophy to have accomplished. The, so when you think about your life, and I know it's really hard to summarize a whole life, but when we think about your life, and you think about your call or your purpose, if we were to put it into a sentence, you are called to, or your mission is, how would you complete that? My mission is to make people understand history. And when I say that, I mean make it approachable. I try to make it approachable for people. Um, if you read a lot of scholarly journals and a lot of things that are being written about history these days, they're not approachable for the average person. 
And that's why people tend to take the easy path. There's a lot of misinformation out there. And really, I mean, as an academic, our goal is to share our knowledge, right? I mean, that's, that's the most basic thing, whether it's within the academic community or to disseminate it to the wider population. I know that sounds kind of pompous, but it's the truth. So would you say then today your career, your, where you're at right now, aligns with what that purpose and mission is? Yes, sure. Mm -hmm. And um, so obviously you've had, I think about students who've mentioned your name and talk about how you've been influential to either connect with their love of history or kind of help them in their next steps, whatever their next step is mm -hmm. for their career. But who's been most influential for you in your life to, to help guide you or inspire you? There's been a couple of people, but if I were to choose, and these are people I think about long sometimes mm -hmm. when I do my job. Uh, Walter Norris, who was my high school English teacher, was one because he had a good vocabulary and a good sense of humor, and I found that appealing. And he's very supportive, uh, despite the fact that I was somewhat of a handful in high school. And Bill Baker at the University of Maine, a British history professor who realized I had potential and cultivated it, helped me along. <clears throat> mm. So if someone was watching this today and they said, you know, you're really living out my dream. You've, you've been a race car driver and done really cool mechanic stuff, and now here you are, a PhD, long-term history professor. What did you do to position yourself? to achieve these, this particular thing? Position myself. Um, right place, right time. I mean, I, I really don't, I didn't have a plan exactly, and it was simply a case of I went back into taking some classes. And once that started, it rekindled my desire to learn more. Which is a good thing if someone, and, and I have told people before, some people aren't ready for college right out of high school. I wasn't. I mean, let's be honest about it. I wasn't. I had thought fast cars and motorcycles were far more appealing. And I had a good time with that for a while, you know. But it became clear after a while that it wasn't going to be a career for me. And so I had to start looking at other options. And I think that's what people have to do position myself, I think the planet's positioned more than I did. So obviously, all these years of higher education, you've had all kinds of conversations, whether with advisees or informal conversations, and sometimes, right, students say, I've been following this track, but really, I just have no idea what I'm supposed to do with my life. And what advice do you have for those type of students? First thing? Um, I get people who tell me, because we're in history, of course, history can be a path to the legal profession because of our study of precedent and other aspects. People tell me, well, I say, well, what do you want to do? And they say, well, I think I'd like to be a lawyer. Well, the first thing I say, if you think you want to be a lawyer, you don't want to be a lawyer. You know, that's something you have to be committed to like anything else and if you think you want to do it you're not going to last just be honest but what you need to do with your life is what you love because that's where you're going to have the most success and you're going to have pressure from other sources no doubt particularly if you're a young person parents are want everyone to be a doctor or a lawyer but that I'm sorry that's not going to happen that's not going to happen you have to do what you want you don't want you know you have to do what makes you happy be it history or be it communications, maybe you want to be a broadcaster, you know, I don't know, but people have to do what makes them happy because there's enough miserable people in the world. 